Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Uh, welcome to Living with Hope's Christian Centers uh, Sunday morning service. We truly appreciate you guys for joining in with us this morning. Those that are watching this live, those that are here, those that will watch it later, we truly thank God for you being here uh, with us this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Courtney Jefferson. I'm the lead pastor here at Living with Hope Christian Center located at 14 Hawks Nest Plaza, St. Charles, Missouri, 63303. And again, we thank you guys for being with us on this glorious Palm Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, we thank God that throughout this week that's coming up, amen, it's leading to one of the greatest things that could ever happen into in the Christian person's life, amen, and that is that resurrection that uh, took place three days after uh, Christ was buried, amen. So on this morning, we just want to start this week off with a great thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you sacrificed, and everything that you uh, uh, have up to this point done for us, and those things that you're doing for us in the future. I truly am in, in honor that, that God and how he does things, the way he keeps things on track, the way he, he just knows what it is that we need. He knows what we want, but most importantly, he knows what we need, and he is the provider of it. He provided his son as a sacrifice because he knew the need that we had. He knew that uh, we, we weren't going to be able to make it just by the law. We needed something to be put in place that could guide us, correct us, rebuke us, deliver us, heal us, and all of those things. And we just thank him on today. Um, on this morning, I want to uh, do I give you our scripture for this morning. Uh, and we're going to pray and then we're going to move right into the word this morning. Amen. Um, this morning's scripture, we're going to be coming from John at St. John chapter 12. And I'm going to be reading starting from the 12th, the 12th verse. And we'll stop when the Lord says we can stop. Uh, again, that's St. John chapter 12, starting at the 12th verse. And it reads, On the next day, much people that would come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's coat. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. The people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead by record. For this cause the people also met him for they had heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold the world is gone after him. Let the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. And I, and I like that last uh, verse of that where it says, The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how, pre, how ye prevail nothing. In other words, all that we've been trying to do, it just isn't working. Behold, the world is gone after him. The people have gone towards him. The people have recognized who he is and what he is. And they are uh, uh, coming together because they want him. Amen. So as we go forth on this morning, we're going to we're going to uh, go with prayer, and then we're going to bring up our speaker on this morning. Amen. I pray that God truly blesses her in the word that He has given her, and that He is glorified uh, through using His vessel on this morning. Father God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we truly thank you for this morning, God. 
We thank you for your triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, Father. We thank you, O oh God, because you have led the way. You have come forth, O oh God, and have done those things that you were spoken of. Father, we thank you right now for the miracles. We thank you right now, O oh God, for the healings, Lord. We thank you for the salvation, O oh God. We thank you for all the delivering, O oh God. We just appreciate you for what you have done for us and appreciate you even more for the things that you have in store for us. Father, we ask that on this day, you bless those that are watching this live, oh God. We bless, ask you to bless those that are here in person, oh God. When we're just looking forward to what you have to bring to us on this morning. We know, oh God, that when you speak, those things that come from you, Lord God, they are for our edification. They are for our uplifting, oh God. They're for getting us closer to you with a greater understanding of who you are. And Father, we just want to give you glory for it. Father, we ask that on this morning you bless the speaker, oh God. Bless her from the crown of her head to the very soles of her feet. Allow her to move out of the way, O oh God, as you fill her up with your word on this morning. As you bring forth those things that you want us to know, O oh God, we thank you for it. We give you glory for it. We ask that you strengthen her body, O oh God, so that she is able to give what you have given to her, Father. Ah, we just bless you today, God. We bless you right now and we give you all the glory and all the honor. And it is in your son, Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen and amen. I truly am. I, I thank the Lord for the, the speaker on this morning. Uh, that in the person of my wife, my friend, uh, my, my, my baby's mama, if you want to, if I can say that, I, 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 I thank him for what he did in my life because of her. There are things that he did in me before I even knew him, before I even had a revelation of who he was. And I know it was because that he because he had put her in my life. Uh, that's how I know that he really was in the saving business because he saved me from a life that was detrimental to me. And I just thank God for her on this morning. So it is my great pleasure to introduce to some and to present to others, none other than the first lady of this uh, uh, house, my wife, my friend, evangelist, first lady, Rayshonda Jefferson. Let's say a hearty amen as she comes this morning. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for those of you that are here. And I thank and I praise God for those of you that are watching live on this morning. Or perhaps maybe you will be watching this live at another time. I give honor and glory to God. Amen. Not only... Uh, for his desire to use me on today. But I honor him on today also for my husband, who is also my pastor. Uh, something he always says how God has sent me in his life for uh, such a time, amen, to deliver in him from some things that he had been enduring. But God did the same thing for me. He sent him in my life in a time uh, where he was just simply an on-time God. So he actually used us for one another. Amen. So I am uh, always will be eternally grateful for God choosing what was best for me. Because if I had a chose what I thought was best for me, I would not have been able to choose such a good gift. So God is the one that, you know, hooked this thing up. We got very married uh, quickly, amen. But if you guys knew our testimony, you would understand why he moved so quickly in our lives. Uh, so I'm thanking and I'm praising him for that. I'm going to go before the Lord uh, on this morning. Uh, bear with me because I am using 
an iPad versus my Bible. I'm, I'm really an old school preacher, you know, where I, I normally do not move with the technology. Uh, I just like utilizing the old fashioned Bible, but I'm trying to come into this time and this age in Jesus name. But God, I thank you on today for your word. I thank you, oh God, that I will move out of the way. And God, in the name of Jesus, have your way in this place. I thank you for your presence. I thank you, oh God, for speaking through me. I want to let you know on today, I trust you. I trust you, oh God, with my very life. Because I know that you know what is best for me, oh God. So God, as you use me as your instrument on today, you also know what is best for those that will be looking in, oh God. Whether it be now or later, God, you know what they need to hear. So I thank you on today in advance for the leading of your spirit. I thank you on today in advance for your matchless and your wonderful power, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Um, I thank and I praise God for the word that he had given me on today. And I don't anticipate on being before you long uh, but I will be before you as long as God will have me to be. But the subject on today uh, is stop looking back and worrying about things you cannot control. Stop looking back and worrying about things you cannot control. Thank you so much, sound man. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, God. Hallelujah. So I first want to go over a couple of definitions in your hearing. Uh, the first I want to, I found a couple of things, uh, is wary. When you are someone that wearies, it means to torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts. So worrying is not only disturbing your thoughts, but it is a form of torment that the enemy uses to distract us. So understand this, most people that find themselves worrying, it is actually a form of torment from the enemy, okay? That word, it also uh, talks about, uh, to. Uh, thank you, Lord. That's the definitions I wanted to give. And the next word that I want to bring to your attention is grumbling. Now, when a person is grumbling, that means that person is uh, murmuring or they're muttering in discontent. They're always complaining. It says uh, to utter low, indistinct sounds. So grumbling, when you're murmuring, you're complaining. Who does that sound like? The children of Israel <laughs> yeah. and us. Thank you for that. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes when we find ourselves worrying about things we literally cannot control, we find ourselves in terms from worrying, being tormented, discontented thoughts, to now you grumbling. Come on, y'all. I'm, I'm very, very guilty of that in the name of Jesus. On he, Just as uh, uh, yesterday, I was discussing something with my husband, and in the midst of something that I had allowed to come out of my mouth, I had, I just began to say, thank you, Jesus. Because I realized that 
my concern. Come on, y'all. We hide behind concern or what I'm concerned about had begun to manifest itself in worrying and in murmuring and complaining. And so those things are the opposite of having faith or your trust placed in God. Come on. Because when you worry and you are concerned, uh, you're not trusting him. Hallelujah. You uh, are actually, you might be fearful of some things. But what does he say in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse number 7? For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. We're not supposed to be walking around fretting and worrying and being overly concerned about stuff that we cannot control. He's not given us that type of spirit and if you are going to say that you trust God you have to decide if you actually are going to trust him either you're going to trust him or you're not going to trust him either you're going to put that matter in his hands the one that actually can do something about it or you're going to handle it yourself come on y'all and then it says but he he has given us a spirit of power of love and of love and of a sound mind. So for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So he told me to tell you on today, stop looking back and worrying about things you cannot control. Some of us are stuck because we are still trying to handle stuff that we should have turned over to God a long time ago. Me and my husband had gotten a revelation because we stepped out in ministry in 2019 and, um, you know, when we stepped out, we got hit with the COVID. He had some ailments that he dealt with in his body. And you would think, hallelujah, that through all of that, you know, and I have to speak about myself, that I would have been totally convinced that God got us. But y'all, guess what? It took all that time, hallelujah, it's four years now going into the fifth year and I finally got it. I finally got that God got us. I finally got you can add not one cubic to yourself. I finally got that no matter what you're doing, if you do it for God, it ain't on you to make it work. It's just on you to be obedient. I finally got stop worrying about stuff you can't control get your eyes off of those things and get your eyes back on me because see when you're worrying about stuff you can't control you're missing the right now the enemy will have you so busy looking and worrying about other stuff that you can't even enjoy where God actually got you right now that scripture come on and go with me to Matthew chapter 25 and verse number chapter 6 excuse me and verses number 25 through 34 uh, it talks about, and I had to print out a couple of versions of it. The first part I'm going to read, I'm going to mix a little bit of the message along with the King James Version. The first part talks about um, hoarding treasures on earth. And it talks about not storing up things that could corrode. I'm using the language of the message version. And it talks about even worse stuff that can be taken uh, by burglars and stockpiling treasure. You want to stockpile your treasure in heaven because those are the things that are really going to last. What am I telling you? I don't 
care what you have materialistically. Only what you do for God is going to last. When you stand before the almighty king, he ain't going to ask you about a big old house that you had built. But he is going to ask you about how you built his big old house. Come on, y'all. He's not going to ask you about the fancy furniture that you had in the house that you had built. But he is going to ask you, what efforts did you make to fill my house with those souls that I longed after? Hallelujah. See, he's telling us, you got to get your mind on the stuff that really matters. The stuff that is that matters is the stuff that you do for God. It is not the stuff that you do in the world. Come on. It ain't about your fancy job. Because let me tell you something. That job could fold up on tomorrow. But baby, you better be in a place where you recognize that God is your provider. That whether I lose this job or he ke I keep this job, God is going to take care of and sustain me. I'm a witness to it. My husband lost a couple of jobs. And our testimony is that God prepared us and sustained us in the midst. We got to see a facet of his glory that we had never seen before. So what is he saying to you on today? Don't be so wary about everything that you miss the moments that you're in. Don't be so concerned about what you storing up and you're not concerned about the house of God. You're not concerned about God's house or kingdom being built in the name of Jesus. And then he goes on to let us know and it talks about the different things that God takes care of. It talks about how if he would literally take care of the birds that are in the air and make food for them, hallelujah, how much more shall he do for you, hallelujah. So it's telling us, don't you take no thought. In other words, he said, which of, by, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto your stature. In other words, you can't do nothing for yourself that God doesn't allow you to do. So what's the point in worrying? You need God to come through and handle it for you anyhow. And then the Bible goes on to tell us. He talks about the, the, the writer Matthew talks about about. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass, come on, y'all, you can see spring coming in and the, the, uh, the, the uh, flowers are blossoming and the trees are blooming and the grass is getting a little taller because it's raining the way that it's supposed to rain and the seasons are switching the way that they're supposed to switch. It takes a God to be able to or straight such a thing. So he says that if I would do all of that for those things, how much more will I do for you? So he says, take no thought. When uh, he was sending his disciples out, hallelujah, and they were going out to preach the gospel, he instructed them, don't you take nothing with you because I want to teach you how to rely upon me. Sometimes God will put you in situations that seem impossible, but he wants to show you that I am a God that handles and deals in the impossible. 
some more. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, uh, Pastor. Hallelujah, Jesus. So the final uh, scripture in that verse, uh, he says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And I got to pause right here because we are a people. We are always anxious for the next thing. But God is saying to you on today, how are you taking care of the thing that I already gave you? How are you handling that thing that you consider to be insignificant? That thing that you count to be small. How are you handling it? How are you taking care of it? Are you being a good steward? Or is your mind already on the next big thing? Because see, people have a tendency to get bored with what they're doing and where they are, but and then become unfaithful with what God has already told them to do. How can he prosper you and move on to the next thing when you're not showing yourself faithful to what he already gave you? You might count it to be small, but in the eyes of God, it's big. And let me tell you something. If you can't overcome the enemy and no demons and devils right where you are, guess what, y'all? You're not going to be able to handle it on the next level. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ah, God, this is fine just like this. I'll hold it if it's, uh, the volume is okay. Hallelujah, Jesus. So guess what? How are you going to be able to handle things on the next level when you can't even handle where you are? Every time the enemy shows up, you go into a panic. You go into a worry. Overly concerned about everything. Why? Because where you are has the troubles that are associated with where you are. Stop trying to move to the next thing when you have not overcome right where you are. The Bible says, I want to read in the message version, it says in 34, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 34, he says, give your attention to what God is doing right now. Live in the right now. Seize the moment right now. I, I remember, hallelujah, when I wanted God to bless me and my family with a bigger house. House. And I begin to tell my family, look, we got to take care of and clean the house that we have now if we want God to bless us with something better. You don't wait until you move into the big house and you decide you're going to start cleaning up. You're going to start cleaning and valuing this little old house that God gave you. Ah, oh, come on, y'all. And value what he gave you so he can see you as being faithful to handle the next big thing. You can't handle the next big thing if you can't handle right where you are. You don't wait and give, hold your ideas back until you get something better. You release them as God instructs right now. Oh, hallelujah. And so he says, and don't get worked up about uh, up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. We can't live in the tomorrow because he is a soon coming king. What if you don't get to that next thing? Did you value what he already gave you? Did you treat it like it was that thing that you desire? Come on, y'all. God is saying because God will help you deal with what whatever hard things come.
come up when the time comes. He prepares us. He, he gets us ready for that next thing. But in that process, you got to take care of what is already given you. How can you look? We are people. Stop looking back and worrying about what you cannot control. We are people. Tomorrow, I pro I, I'm, I'm thinking tomorrow has its troubles of its own. I learned over these four years to appreciate where we are right now. So guess what? This little storefront church, I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to make sure it looks nice. Come on, y'all. Because why? I want to be found faithful for the next thing that God has for me. But guess what? He is a soon coming king. What if he chooses we won't get there because he chose to come back? I want to be found faithful. Because the level that I'm on right now and where we are right now, he has given us power and authority and anointed us for this place right now. Sometimes, y'all know what? Let me talk to you for a moment. Because sometimes, I'm sorry, husband, can you pass me that water? Sometimes, we could be so, so busy. Thank you. Worrying about, is God going to do it? When is God going to do it? That we miss the moment that we are in right now. Worrying saps out your joy. Worrying saps out your strength. It discourages you, and it causes you not to be able to appreciate the place that you are in right now. God, we thank you on today that we are grateful. The Bible says, be content in whatever state you are found, whether you be a base whether you be abound, be content. In other words, be all right in the place that God has for you. Don't let yourself be overcome with fear and weary, always worrying. Y'all know what? I look at God and how he uses my son. And I am confident of who God has called my son to be. And I'm not worried about him getting a scholarship. I'm not worried about how college is going to be paid for because I know God has great things for him. And I'm looking for God to do the miraculous. I'm looking for God to give direction and show favor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't be worried about what you cannot control. Looking back, it will always, when we say looking back, you're always looking over here, always looking over there. Never content in the place that God has you in. People of God, you can go ahead with the instrumental. I told you I would only be as long as he would have me to be. God, we thank you on today. We thank you for your grace and your love. Y'all, let me tell you something. This morning I, or yesterday as I was preparing, and I said, God, what example can I give people as an example, he simply said, the children of Israel. They are the perfect example. I had made promise, a promise to them that I was going to take them into a land flowing 
in milk and honey. He said, in this land that I had picked out for them, many did not go because of murmuring and complaining and looking back at what was. And in my mind, I could not fathom. I said, if the children of Israel were slaves and they were in bondage in that place that they were in, God, why would they want to go back there? And he said, because it was all that they knew. It was what they were familiar with. And sometimes when things get hard, we want to look back and go with what's familiar. Because we're worrying about things that we cannot control. It was not up to them to get them to that promised land. It was up to God. Their job was to trust him, believe him, and take him at his word, and do what he had told them to do. When it came time to fight, they should have geared up for battle. When Moses sent the spies over to the land, it was everything that God said it would be. Why is it that they missed it? Because fear, looking back, wanting what was and not what God had for them. And y'all, just like them, you can get to a place where God says, that's it. That's it. Many of them did not go because they had provoked the Lord to, in such a way that he would only allow that next generation to go. I don't want to be like that. So God, I thank you on today for your word. If you're out there, You've been worrying, you've been murmuring, complaining. This word was for you. Take no thought. Yesterday when I was talking with my husband and we were just having a conversation and I realized I was murmuring, I went from being concerned to worrying and murmuring and complaining and I stopped mid-sentence and I shut my mouth and I said God I thank you and I began to thank him because I understood it could be worse sometimes we don't appreciate where he got us because it could be worse thank you God I thank you on today for every person that will be under the sound of my voice, God. Forgive us. Stand up on your feet. Because sometimes repentance is in order. God, I'm sorry for complaining. Maybe you complained about your parents. We got young people here. Maybe you complain about your dad or your mom. It could be worse. You have to start saying, God, I thank you for the mama and the daddy that you gave me. Because it could be worse. Pastor, I know you, your heart, you want God to do what he said he was going to do in this place. But we thank him. We thank them for the one or two or three that shows up when they show up. And we're not going to wait to preach until the house is full. We're going to focus on those that show up. Because God said he has something for them because heaven rejoices over that one. So this place, we will take care of it 
just like we would if he gave us a different edifice. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you. Bow your heads. We repent on this morning. Whatever you've been murmuring and complaining about, God, we thank you for everything that you've done. Everything that is good comes from you. We appreciate you all today. You've never left us, nor forsaken us. Even the tears that we cried, you showed us you were right there in the midst. So God, I give you glory. I honor you. We ask that somebody get saved on today, God. Let this be a day that somebody chooses to give their life to you wholeheartedly. And we ask that you would fill them up with your spirit in the name of Jesus. Give them a desire to be baptized in your name for the remission of sins, God. Do it on today. If we've forgotten about what this thing is about, God, forgive us and let us be those that will go after souls, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for every time you speak. Hey, Thank you for every time you've spoken because you love us and you are concerned about us. We give you glory. We give you honor. I worship you. I worship you. Come on and worship the King. We give you glory. We give you honor. I worship the King. I worship the King. Nobody like you. Nobody like our King. We were you we worship you hail your hymn Emmanuel Jehovah God your name is Jesus our Prince of Peace, hallelujah, God, we're grateful, we're grateful, I am grateful, I'm grateful, God, I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we bless you. We honor you, O oh, King. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you. I 
thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I feel a release in the name of Jesus. At this time, I turn you over to my pastor. Thank you, Jesus. types of things you may be seated that's not that's not for the saints of God you know we let, let me say it like this there's nothing wrong with a concern but when it comes to constantly worrying or constantly being anxious that's not for us worrying and being anxious that leads us to doing other things, but being concerned, that leads us to our needs. So if you're concerned about somebody, you're gonna go before the Lord. If you're worrying about them or if you're anxious about them, you're gonna be fidgeting and fiddling around and not, not focused on what needs to be done. When you're worrying and you're anxious, you forget the one that is in control of everything. That's concern is when it puts you on your knees. We thank God for his word on today. We thank him for just speaking with us. I often say that I'm so grateful that he is yet speaking to us. You know, there were times when uh, in uh, Israel's lifetime that God just stopped speaking. Most recent one had been in uh, before Jesus came onto the scene and stopped speaking to them. But I'm grateful that right now he's still in the talking mode. So we thank him for today. We thank him for his vessel that he used. We pray that he restores and re strengthens her and gets her back to uh, uh, because this preaching drains you. You may not even be whooping, hollering, jumping around, but it drains you. And we pray that the Lord just restores her strength and gets her back to that level so she can get back into the word and, and be prepared for the next time that the Lord is going to use her. Amen. And again, I thank God for um, just being here with us on today. Uh, I, I want to make a, a correction. That was something that was said. <laughs> I was, she said that I, I lost my job. I lost a couple of jobs. I didn't lose them. I knew exactly where they were. <laughs> they laid us off. So it, it, it wasn't that I was trying to leave them, but it was that they laid us off. But in all of that, you know, there was no worry. There was no anxiousness in our lives because we knew who had us. You know, and, and you know, I'll be honest, I that I credit that first layoff to pushing me even closer to God because that's what really had me uh turn to him. Because it was just very shortly after that that I just turned my life over to him and he saved me and filled me with his precious Holy Ghost. So I thank him. Because you know, sometimes God needs to get our attention for something and and in, and, I, and I believe that in both cases it was to get my attention that first one was to bring me to him was to bring me closer to him that second time was also to bring me closer to him because I had gotten I was in a job where I was making at that time decent money and I and you know when Sometimes you can be in that type of a, of a position and you lose focus. But he is quick to grab your focus. So he 
grabbed me out of that, allowed me to go ahead and be laid off, and then would not allow me to get another job for a whole year because <laughs> he wanted me to spend time with him. He wanted me to be in his presence. So I just thank him for how he moves. I thank him for how he comforts us. And I just thank him for who he is. All right. So, uh, oh, if there's anybody out there that uh, the Lord is putting it on your heart to be a blessing unto the ministry, you can do so in the form of giving uh, through uh, Cash App, which is dollar sign living with hope. Or you can do it through Givelify, which is Living with Hope Christian Center. You can mail something in to 14 Hawks Nest Plaza, St. Charles, Missouri, 6336. Uh, I'm sorry, 63303. Uh, truly, we thank you guys for being uh, just with us in our adoration and loving of the Lord on this morning. And we pray that the rest of your uh, uh, this blessed week for you is one that the Lord smiles upon you and blesses you. And as always, uh, since we've been saying from the beginning of this year, let yourself be made free in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen.